stuff like that, it makes me really mad that I don't have a Facebook. Like, this is what I'm missing out on. Okay, everybody. Uh, so today, we will talk about the lymphatic system. You know that lymphatic system is responsible for immunity. That means this system provides defensive functions to your body. First, we will see the parts and functions of this system. Then we will talk about the lymph vessels. Lymphatic system is another circulatory system. You know that main circulatory system is what? Cardiovascular system, right? That's the main circulatory system. Blood circulates inside the cardiovascular system, right? Lymphatic system is another circulatory system. The fluid circulates inside it is called the lymph. And lymph circulates inside the lymphatic systems system, that's why it has lymphatic vessels or lymph vessels. Then we'll talk about the cells. Those are called lymphoid cells. T cells and B cells. T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes. Then we'll talk about lymphoid tissue inside the lymph organs. Inside the lymph organs, you have follicles. And those follicles contain huge amount of T and B cells. Huge amount of T and B cells. So we'll see the follicles. Then we'll talk about the spleen, thymus, tonsil, lymph nodes, and Peyer's patches and lacteals. What are those things? First, the parts of the lymphatic system. Lymphatic system. Lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are small round structures distributed throughout the lymphatic system. Throughout the lymphatic system. And there are many in number, small in size and distributed throughout the lymphatic system. Lymph nodes are solely responsible for immunity. Solely or completely responsible for immunity. provides immunity. Okay? No other functions. Immunity is the only function. Function. Then you have lymph organs. <coughs> lymph organs are few, not many. And they have other functions too. They provide immunity, but they have other functions. So first, lymph organs are few, larger than lymph nodes, and they provide immunity, but also other functions. What are the lymph organs? Lymph organs are spleen, tonsils, Thymus. Okay. <clears throat> then you have lymph vessels or lymphatic vessels. Okay. Lymph vessels include capillaries.
collecting hassles. Trunks, ducks. Okay, so those are lymph vessels. Then the last thing is the fluid that is called lymph. Lymph is the fluid that circulates inside the lymphatic system. Okay. So those are the parts of this system. <clears throat> okay, now from where the fluid enters into the lymphatic system, from where the fluid comes, you know in the tissue of your body you have the cells, so this is the tissue, you have cells and interstitial fluid in between the cells, interstitial fluid. Everywhere in the body. Now, your Lymph capillaries are like this. So these are lymph capillaries in the tissue. And the interstitial fluid enters into the lymph capillary and becomes the lymph. So when the interstitial fluid from the tissue enters into the lymphatic capillaries or lymph capillaries, it becomes lymph fluid. So then the capillaries keep the lymph to the collecting vessels, then from there go through the trunks, then finally go to the ducts. Ducts are the largest lymphatic vessels. So ducts are what? Largest. largest lymphatic vessels. Okay? So finally, the lymph or fluid goes to the ducts. And then what happens? The ducts give the fluid to the veins, which mean subclavian, subclavian vein. You must remember this, subclavian under the clavicle, right, under the clavicle. So, from where the lymph, that fluid comes, interstitial fluid, right, interstitial fluid that enters into the lymphatic capillaries, makes sense, and becomes lymph. And then the lymph circulates inside the lymphatic system, lymphatic vessels, then finally the lymph goes to the ducts. Those are the largest vessels, and from the ducts, the lymph goes where? To the subclavian vein. That means what? The lymph is given to the blood circulation, right? Subclavian vein. So, venous blood. So, coming from interstitial fluid, circulating inside the lymphatic system, and finally given to the blood. Is it clear? Which blood vessel is receiving? Subclavian. So uh, that's how the <coughs> lymph or fluid uh, enters and gets out. Here you see uh, the structures that I have mentioned. You see the lymphatic capillaries. Now the difference between a lymph capillary and blood capillary is, if you see the lymph capillaries, the green colors, the lymph capillaries don't anastomose. That's why I showed you like this. Dead ended. No anastomosis. They don't form any network. But blood capillary, if you see the blood capillary, 
you know that plug capillaries form network or bed, right? But leaf capillaries are dead ended, single ended. So that is one difference. So number two, in the leaf capillaries you have mini valves, mini valves, flat like mini valves, and they open in one direction only unidirectional. That means what? Now you see here, look at this. Leaf enters from the interstitial fluid, right? The fluid enters into the capillary. So which way the valve should open? Inwards. Makes sense? To let the fluid get in. But if that fluid tries to get out, it will get closed. Okay? So only the interstitial fluid can do what? Get in but it cannot get out. Make sense? So we'll open inwards to let it get in. So unidirectional flap-like mini valves. You can see that. Also, uh, leaf capillaries have filaments. And those filaments, thread-like structures, they attach the capillaries to the surrounding tissues. So. Uh, you know, just to uh, give, um, you know, so the lymph capillaries cannot move. It's like, you know, tying the capillaries to the adjacent tissue. Tell us. So that's how the lymph capillary is different than the blood capillaries. No anastomosis, dead-ended or blind-ended. They have flat like uh, unidirectional valves, uh, mini valves. So that let the interstitial fluid to get in, but it cannot get out, and then uh, filaments. <coughs> the advantage of having mini valves is see here, if this tissue, this is tissue, got infection, so you know microorganisms are here in the interstitial fluid. So what the Capillaries do will take the fluid inside, so some microorganisms and the fluid will get in, right? Makes sense? Microorganisms and fluid will get in. But if they can come out, the microorganisms, then it is useless, right? The function of lymphatic system is taking the microorganisms inside it and destroy. Before it destroys, it has to take them inside, right? So it will only let the fluid and microorganisms get in, but not get out. Except once it is in, the fluid and the microorganisms, then the cells, T cells, B cells will destroy. Okay? So that's why uh, one direction. <coughs> you see here, finally, the duct enters into the subclavian vein, the venous blood. That's what they have shown, uh, the large vein close to the heart. <coughs> Lymphatic vessels are similar to veins except the lymphatic vessels have thinner wall. So the wall is thinner than the veins. And they have more internal valves. You remember when I talked about the differences between arteries and veins, I said that arteries don't have valves, veins have valves, right? So we know that veins have valves, but lymphatic vessels have more valves than the veins. Lymphatic vessels, we are not talking about lymphatic capillaries, remember. Lymphatic vessels have more anastomosis than the blood vessels. But opposite is true for the capillaries. You have seen that lymphatic capillaries are dead ended, blind ended, they don't anastomose. But blood capillaries form network or blood uh, bed, right? We know that. Blood capillaries form capillary bed. But lymph capillaries don't. They don't form network. Uh, but lymphatic vessels are connected to each other more frequently, more often, okay? 
Now, there are two groups of lymphatic vessels, superficial and deep. So, uh, the superficial vessels run with the superficial veins and deep vessels run with the arteries. We know that in our body, the veins are superficial and arteries are deep. That's why you can see the veins under the skin, right? You can see the veins. So, superficial group of lymphatic vessels run with the veins and deep group of lymphatic vessels run with the arteries. So, two groups of Okay, ducts are the largest lymphatic vessels, right? Ducts are the largest. So, how many ducts we have in the lymphatic system? There are two ducts. So, there are two ducts. What are those? Thoracic duct, and right lymphatic duct. Right lymphatic duct, okay? So this one is much bigger than this one. Thoracic duct, which is also called left lymphatic duct, is bigger than the right lymphatic duct. Uh, if you see the thoracic duct, the lower end of thoracic duct, you have an expanded part. So this is the thoracic duct, and this expanded part at the lower end of thoracic duct is called cisterna cali. Cisterna cali. cali. Cisterna cali. This lower expanded or dilated end of the thoracic duct. And many lymphatic vessels give the lymph collect from the lower part of the body, these lymphatic vessels collect lymph from the lower part of the body and change it to the cisterna cali. Okay? That's why that part is expanded to receive many lymphatic vessels. <coughs> now, where the ducts uh, get the lymph from? Right? Lymphatic duct is in the smaller one, receives lymph from or fluid from one fourth area of the body. Which one fourth part? If you divide the body this way into four quadrants, this is upper right quadrant, okay? Upper left quadrant, lower right, lower left, okay? Now, the right lymphatic duct, the duct which is smaller, so it receives limb from what? Only upper right quadrant. That means one fourth area of the body. Thoracic duct is larger, right? So it receives limb from rest three fourth part. That means what? Upper left quadrant and whole lower part of the body. Is it clear? Now, uh, both right lymphatic duct and thoracic duct give lymph to the subclavian vein. How many subclavian veins you have? Two, right? Two subclavian veins. One is in right side, another in the left side. You know that, right? So, right thoracic duct, you look at me, right thoracic duct takes or collects the lymph from which part? One fourth. One fourth, right? Upper right quadrant. That means what? right half of your head, right half of your neck, right, right half of your thorax, and right upper leg. Is it clear? Wait, so isn't the thoracic duct on the left side? Yeah, thoracic duct is right side. So, the right lymphatic duct receives limb from upper right quadrant, right? Yeah. That means what? Half of, right half of your head, right? 
right half of your neck, right half of your thorax, and the upper right limb. Lift it. So given to which subclavian, right or left? Right. Right, because it is right side. And thoracic duct receives limb from rest three part, three fourth part of the body and drains the limb into the left subclavian vein. Make sense? And where? You know subclavian vein and internal jugular like this. This is subclavian. Internal jugular going upwards, right? And subclavian under the clavicle. So at the junction here into the subclavian vein, okay? Near the internal jugular. So that's how the lymph goes to the blood circulation. <coughs> if you go to uh, the cadaver lab, when you take the student, uh, try to find the thoracic duct. Thoracic duct is easy to find because it rests on the vertebral column, like this. Okay? So it is easy to find. But the problem is you may think it is a blood vessel, but it is not. Okay? And the lower end is expanded or dilated. Okay? That is cisterna chi. You see the picture. <coughs> See the internal jugular vein, subclavian, and the ducts are entering there. Lymphoid cells. Two types of cells in your lymphatic system are the main warriors. So those cells are located inside the lymph nodes, inside the lymph organs, in the fluid, everywhere. Which two cells? T cells or T lymphocytes? Same thing. And B cells or B lymphocytes? These are the main warriors, main cells that fight against the antigens. They are present in huge number in the lymph nodes, lymph organs, that means spleen, thymus, tonsils, as well as in the fluid. Okay, so they destroy the antigens. So what are the antigens? Antigens are the protein structures that can enter into your body from outside and trigger the production of antibody. So antigen must be able to do what? Stimulate the production of antibody. If something enters from outside into your body, but that doesn't, you know, trigger the production of antibody, we will not consider that as antigen. Make sense? The antigen enters and stimulate the immune system to produce antibody. Now, antigens can also be produced inside the body. Not only antigens come from outside. Which antigens come from outside? We know that bacteria, virus, microorganisms right? come from outside. And that stimulates the production of antibody. Now, antigens can also be created inside the body. Which um, you know, uh, are the antigens produced inside the body? Cancer cells, abnormal cells, right? Or tumor cells those are considered as antigens because they are although part of your body but your body considers them as any. Make sense? When some cells start to behave abnormal like cancer cell or tumor cell, right? Those are not normal. They are behaving abnormal, right? So your body treat them as what? Any. And try to destroy them. How? By producing antibody. Make sense? So, those cells are also considered as antigen, your bone body cells. Yes. Yeah. So you understand that, right? So antigens can get in from outside or can be produced inside the body, abnormal cells. <coughs> now, sometimes this is interesting that your body start to treat healthy cells, normal cells as antigen. That is a problem, right? That's a big problem. If you, your own body start to think the normal cells are, you know, anyway, so they try to do what? Destroy the normal cells, healthy cells. 
that is not good. So that is autoimmune disease. Your own body is destroying or trying to destroy your healthy cells of the body. Right? Cancer cell fine, that's good. Should be destroyed, right? Tumor cells should be destroyed, but not the healthy cells. So that causes the problem called autoimmune disease. For example, rheumatoid arthritis. You know, your joint is fine, everything is good. You know, suddenly if your body starts to destroy the cells of the joints, you know, joint capsules or other structures of the joint, then what will happen? Inflammation will occur, right? Inflammation will occur due to fighting of antigen antibody. So that you see as rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, <coughs> you must remember another disease I talked about uh, in AMP1 uh, when we talked about the neuromuscular junction. On postsynaptic membrane, you have acetylcholine receptors, some of you must remember. And uh, if the acetylcholine receptors are destroyed, then contraction of muscle depolarization will not occur, muscle contraction will not occur. In that case, the person's muscles will be extremely you know, uh, weak, right? because it cannot contract the muscle. So autoimmune disease destroys the receptors, acetylcholine receptors. And that clinical condition is called myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia Anyway, so that is called gravis, where the muscles are extremely weak. The person gets fatigued very easily because of destruction, autoimmune destruction of the acetylcholine receptor. Anyway, so antigens must be able to do what? Antigens, no. Yes, that is important. Antigens must be able to stimulate the production of antibodies, remember. Antigens can get into the body from outside or can be created inside the body, right? But they should be able to produce antibody in your body or your body should be able to produce antibody in response to antigens. So T cells and B cells. T cells or T lymphocytes after the lymphocytes are produced in the bone marrow, you know that all white blood cells are produced higher in the bone marrow, right? So lymphocytes are white blood cells. Remember? Neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, right? So, lymphocytes are what? One type of white blood cells, right? They are produced in the bone marrow. We know that. So, after the lymphocytes are produced, okay, lymphocytes are produced in bone marrow. What happens? Some lymphocytes stay in the bone marrow. and get matured there, inside the bone marrow. Some lymphocytes go to the thymus and get matured inside the thymus, okay? And then they come out. Those lymphocytes get matured in the bone marrow. They become B lymphocytes. Those get matured inside the thymus, they become what? T cells, T lymphocytes. Makes sense, right? So we uh, get matured in the bone marrow, T in thymus. Is it clear? Okay. Now, why they need to get matured in two different locations, two different places? You know, when the young kids are recruited in army, military, okay? So they don't know anything. They don't know how to operate the guns or things like that, right? But they are sent to different camps, right? You go to this for these trainings, you go to another camp for that training, right? And they are trained differently. So like that, these lymphocytes 
after the lymphocytes are produced, these naive young lymphocytes don't know how to fight. Then they are sent to two different places to get matured. That means get trained. Okay? And in, in the bone marrow, they learn to do what? These lymphocytes learn to produce and secrete antibodies. Antibodies. Okay? So these cells can produce and secrete what? Antibodies. Is it clear? And these cells learn to do phagocytosis. Phagocytosis. And go, right? You know. <coughs> So like, you know, if you see an enemy, some, you know, somebody is trying to attack you, coming towards you, there are two ways you can fight. If you think that person, uh, you can grab him, smaller than you, right? You can grab him, you let him come, okay, come close to me, I'll, you know, take care of him. <laughs> so that, right? So, but if you think that that, might, uh, that person might have a gun or something, could be hurtful, right? If he comes close to you, what you will do? You will shoot, right? So you will uh, not let him come close to you. <laughs> so B cells secrete the antibodies, and the antibodies go to the antigens, okay? And destroy them. But T cells do what? Physically, right? Come contact and do phagocytosis. Eat them and go out and destroy them, okay? So that's what they learn in these two areas. So B cells produce antibodies. Now some B cells are converted to another type of cells. Those are called plasma cells. Plasma cells. And these plasma cells can produce huge amount of antibodies. Plenty of antibodies. The B cells can produce antibody, but a smaller amount. When the B cells are converted to plasma cells, they can produce more antibodies. Okay? Now, <coughs> T cells could be different types. Okay. Helper T cells. Cytotoxic T cells. Memory T cells. Regulatory T cells. Okay, so these are different types of T cells. In uh, microbiology, you will learn more about this. Just know that helper T E R helper T cells. Okay, helper T cells, cytotoxic T cells, memory T cells, and regulatory T cells, and they work differently. Okay, so those are different types of cells. We'll talk about the function briefly, the functions of these different types of T cells in next class. Okay, B cells or B lymphocytes could be some of them are converted to plasma cells, you know that I have mentioned. Some are converted to helper cells. cells. 
memory B cells. So those are different types of B cells and T cells. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, these memory T cells are very helpful because you know memory cells they can keep the information of any invasion. Like you got you know swine flu first time. So some T cells and B cells will stay in your body as memory cells and they will keep the information of that you know swine flu virus. And when second time the same type of you know microorganism will try to antigen will try to invade into your body. These memory cells already have the information, right? So they will quickly activate the immune system. So your immune system will quickly respond to second invasion. Okay? <clears throat> so that's why memory cells are very important. But the memory cells can you know last for several years, then you know information may get lost. So that's why uh, some vaccines you have to get out a few years again okay, so to uh, keep that information. Anyway, so you already know that once someone gets an antigen first time, second time, the chance of getting sick is less because your immune system is already ready to fight against that specific one. Now, the lymph node. Lymph nodes are many and they are tiny. In certain areas in your body, the lymph nodes are clustered. Although I said, you remember, I said that lymph nodes are many and distributed throughout the lymphatic system, right? But in some areas, the lymph nodes are aggregated or clustered, makes sense? Group. Which areas you probably know when you go to your doctor, the doctor, you know, check like this, right? Check like this. Have you seen that? So they want to see any enlargement of lymph node. So around the neck, in the neck, in the axillary area, the lymph nodes are grouped, clustered in the inguinal area okay, uh, of the body. There are many now. Now, lymph node has two types of vessels, afferent and efferent. One starts with A, another starts with what? E. e. So this is the lymph node. Okay. These are the vessels bringing the fluid in. These are afferent. Vessels and taking the fluid out, this is effort. Exit. Start with E. Okay. So lymph gets in, then gets out. Now inside the lymph node, if you cut the lymph node and see the inside outer part is called the cortex outer part is called what cortex and inner part is medulla so this part is the cortex the outer part this outer part is cortex and inner part is medulla okay in the cortex you will see many round kind of round structures. These are called follicles. Follicles. Okay. These follicles are heavily filled with lymphocytes. So these are packed with what? Lymphocytes. main warriors. So those are like, you know, the camps where the soldiers, right? 
heavily present inside those gaps or gaps. Okay. So now you see what happens. <coughs> Lymphatic vessels bring the fluid inside. Those are afferent vessels. And that fluid contains what? Antigens, right? You remember? Antigens from the interstitial, you know, spread the fluid with antigen, get in. So that fluid gets in. So antigens are taken inside the lymph nodes. And these cells are waiting to do what? Destroy them, right? These cells are waiting to destroy them. So the fluid gets in. Lymph node first does what before destroying the antigens? Filter the fluid to separate the enemies or antigens, okay? Filter and separate the enemies, antigens. And then the lymphocytes will do what? Destroy them. Make sense? We'll take care of them. So, you know, uh, <coughs> we have borders, right? In the north, we have border with what? Canada, right? In the south, Mexico, okay? So, uh, I drive to Canada almost every year, and in Canada, it's difficult to find the, uh, what are those called? Check, Check stations, yeah. yeah. Right? They're far from each other. In Mexico, there are many, okay? The check posts do what? Yeah, the people are getting in, right? They will stop them, right? We will check them. And if they think these people are harmful, they will separate them, right? Separate them. So lymph nodes are doing exactly the same type of function, right? They are check posts everywhere, right? For the lymphatic system. And the fluid is bringing the enemies, right? Harmful antigens. And the lymph nodes are doing what? Separating the enemies, antigens, right? And the lymphocytes are doing what? Destroying them, right? So that's the function. Now the question is, uh, the number of afferent vessels is more than the number of efferent. That means the fluid is getting in more, right? faster than the fluid is getting out. Make sense? Because more vessels are bringing the fluid in, so the fluid will get in faster, but get out what? Slower. Because the number of effluent is less. And that is good, because that time the fluid is staying, the more time the fluid will stay inside the lymph node, it will do better job, right? separating the antigens and destroying them, the lymph nodes will get more time to do that, right? So that's why you have more afferent than efferent. And you see, inside the vessels, you have valves. Which way? One way, valves. So the fluid can only get in, cannot get out that way, cannot escape. So the valves will op open only inwards. And here, the valves will open outwards. So fluid can get out, but cannot get in. So, make sense? Once the fluid is clean, clear, then it should not get in, right? So, antigen-containing fluid will get in. Yeah. Why are, why appear lymph nodes get swollen? Why do only some of them get swollen? Yes, uh, if it is local infection, Okay? Like in this area of your body, you got somewhere, you got infected, right? Yeah. So these lymph nodes will get swollen because okay. they are fighting against the antigens. So if it's like, if it's in your neck, you know that the problem's are yes. here. Yes. If it's yes. down here, then it's down in your leg or something like that? Exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah, that will tell you that in which area the infection is, okay? Because I know it, sometimes, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Um, like, I've heard that if you're under a lot of stress, you're, you'll have a lot more white blood cells. So, 
which lymph nodes would be possibly swollen for stress? Not necessarily uh, number of white blood cell increase will, you know, it will, uh, it affect won't the make the lymph nodes no, swollen? No, not, okay. not, not necessarily. Okay. It usually does not. Okay. Okay. Unless oh, you have a but definitely, uh, anxiety or stress can, you know, uh, impact your immune system. It is true. It is true. Yeah, it, we can see your immune system. What about like if you were having problems with like the thyroid? Would your lymph nodes around your thyroid glands? Yes. Go? Yes. Unless you know, from that gland, some like you know, uh, abnormal cells go to other areas, like you know, cancer cells or any those kind of. In that case, you will see. Uh, widespread swelling of the lymph nodes, but usually localized. So that's why we, we check, you know, uh, the areas to see if any can be the infection in that area. Okay. And uh, lymph nodes or tonsils, when they work more, okay, uh, they get swollen. And eventually, if they work too much, they 